Uh, Mike, because there's this important point here, Peter, which you said is so true, which ultimately is, I think, at the core of the situation, the bond market trading like a meme stock. It sounds like hyperbole, but there have been moments the last few years where that has frankly been true. No matter what side you're on in the debate, you have to recognize that the volatility in bonds is uh, possibly a problem at very best uh, not the way it's supposed to work. But throughout all of that, Mike, the dollar has remained strong. The dollar has been firming. Now, last week, the dollar broke down pretty hard. But from a technical perspective, if I were thinking the market were making a referendum on the U.S. solvency issue because of the, the things we're talking about here today, our dollar would be crashing. How come the dollar has been so strong, by the way, we have five minutes, despite how volatile the bond market is for that country. So the dollar right now is a wrecking ball, unstoppable force, partly because in the U.S. Treasury is the safest assets on the planet. You can guarantee in a T-bill you're getting 5.4%. You can't do that in any place in the world that's even close. In Canada, what is it, 4%? In Europe, maybe 4%. And then the top other countries in the planet, China, 2%. Germany, what, 3%, Japan, less than 1%. That's an unstoppable force. That's a hard hedge. So if you're short the dollar, it's a very negative carry trade. And then, by the way, we have these wars going on. I mean, that's part of the formation of this country. I know my relatives left Europe to get away from all the wars and a lot of the, mid, you know, in Europe. Um, a couple hundred years ago. We were peasants. We got sick of fighting the war. And just the, the nature of what's happening. So let's think about what's happening there. And then I like to point out is... By default, it wins. There's just no other way. If you look at every, why do they trade Bitcoin in dollars in every country in the world? Why do they quote it? Because the dollar is the default. There's nothing even close. Remember the euro? I thought, okay, it was going to be a great deal. It's it's maybe on a one to ten scale, dollars a ten in terms of currencies and everything else is a five. But the key thing, I think, is looking forward. What has been the primary, leading, coincident? measure of what's boosted the dollar for the last since 2009 is that's the US stock market outperforming the world if you take the S&P 500 you divide it by the MSCI XUS it's tick for tick going higher so what's going to take for the dollar to not break the creating global wealth that is part of it yes i mean and it's a lot of it's tech and the US does that better than everyone else but at some point it always gets too expensive 1929 many other examples in history early 70s i mean 2000 that's what i'm calling for as a normalization but the key thing is the dollars can keep breaking things until the US economy contracts rates go down and the stock market goes down relative to the rest of the world. That's just the way it has been. Maybe there's something different, but just a little reversion in that trade, I think, is significant. So I like to point out gold. There's a one asset I like to ask anybody in the room. They know any major asset, the average price this year is the highest in its history. Gold in U.S. dollars. Now, if you're gold in every other currency, it's higher. So the average price this year is 1931. It's almost 1933. It was a great year. That's when we went off the, you know, we confiscated kind of a gold standard but and right now it's 1990 1990 in u.s dollars i look at that it's just a matter of time that in the history of the dollar per ounce price of gold versus the s p 500 they've been playing cat and mouse since we came off the gold standard in 1971 and every time we go in recession and gold's well below the s p 500 it just I mean reverts up that's about three thousand dollars <laughs>